How could you measure the height of a building using trigonometric ratios and a hypsometer? In this video, we will discuss several applications of standard GSRT8, culminating with students indirectly measuring this building's height. MGSE 9-12 G.SRT8 Use trigonometric ratios and the Pythagorean theorem to solve right triangles in applied problems. In sixth grade, students find the area of triangles and other polygons by decomposing them into triangles and parallelograms. And then in seventh grade, students explore creating triangles, noticing when three sides and angles create a unique triangle, more than one triangle, or no triangle. Students use facts about supplementary, complementary, vertical, and adjacent angles to find unknown angles. Beginning in eighth grade, students apply the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Students apply the Pythagorean theorem to determine unknown side lengths in real-world problems and to find the distance between two points in a coordinate system. Students use facts about the angle sum of triangles and the angle-angle criterion for similarity of triangles to solve mathematical problems. In high school, students deepen their understanding of the Pythagorean theorem and similarity leading to a definition of trigonometric ratios. Students use trigonometric ratios to solve mathematical and real-world problems in high school geometry and pre-calculus courses. In this video, students are completing tasks from the Georgia Frameworks Geometry Unit 3 Right Triangle Trigonometry and Analytic Geometry Unit 2's Right Triangle Trigonometry. These frameworks may be found at georgiastandards.org. Standard GSRT8 asks students to apply right tri triangle trigonometry to solve problems in context. In order for students to select appropriate trigonometric functions and answer the question asked, it is essential that they are comfortable drawing diagrams to illustrate math problems, even more to mathematize their drawings to show the details and relationships that are mathematically important. In the Georgia Frameworks task, Write Triangles in Your Environment, the whole class introduction segment of the lesson includes the following situation before students begin working in homogeneous pairs determined by their pre-assessment data to match situations and diagrams. You are looking at a painting on the wall at the High Museum in Atlanta. You are standing 10 feet from the wall. Your angle of elevation to view the painting is 20 degrees. Your eyes are about 5 feet above the floor find the height of the painting. To highlight the importance of creating accurate and precise diagrams for solving geometric problems, these students were asked to draw a model of the situation only first. Then they shared their diagram and came to consensus about which diagram they would use to solve the problem. So um, you will put the angle of elevation is going to be 20 because it gave that in the problem. So that's what it is. It's, it's very simple. It was just uh, angle of elevation would be here, the angle that we was given was 20, and it said that we are standing 10 feet from the wall, so 10 would go down here at the base, and then uh, we're looking for the height of the painting, which would be on the wall. Pause and reflect on the student's diagram so far. Do they match the restraints of the context? We drew it as our first is sitting here, and this is height of 5 inches. The angle of elevation starts from his eyes with a 20 degree angle that's angled at the painting. Uh, what we have to do is find the angle or find the side right here and then add the five feet uh, right here to find our total height. So if you had to solve this problem, which picture would you use to solve it of your three? Mine. Mm -hmm. We would use theirs. Yeah. Why do you think you would use theirs? Because they use more details of how you will add the um, height of the eyes into it. Man, we was like, close. Drawn out really clear. You could see where everything was. It was easy to look at. The collaborative activity in the format of assessment lesson, Write Triangles in Your Environment, and the framework task, Clyde Construction Crew, are additional opportunities to support student development of crafting effective diagrams as a problem-solving strategy. As we drop in on students working, consider how you might use these tasks, what value do you see in these activities, and what questions you might ask students to further their understanding. I don't understand it because, like, if the tree was snapped, then it, this right here wouldn't be 100 feet. Oh, It'd be, like, because this is still part of the tree. It's like, this is the tree. It's like, 
And I just fell down there. It'd be something below 100, like, like if it snapped, like, in, in complete half, it would be like 50, you know, like 50 feet, then 50 feet, yeah. What do you think? Does it tell you something that um, corroborates what he said? Or does it tell you anything about a break? Oh well, yeah, it says, it, says it snapped by a strong wind and it was two yards above the ground. So I noticed you said it wouldn't be a hundred. Could you figure out how much it would be then? Let's see, how many feet are in the yard? How many feet are in the yard? I think, is it three? Yeah. Okay, so that would be six. Okay, so six feet. So that's how tall the tree is now okay, so this, this is 20 from the break. Feet. No, this is 20. No, this is 20. I think that's 100. Because it's stupid. Right? Because the tree, if it was like the tree was right here, and it broke by the wind, that 100 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I was about to say because it's not like the tree just went, yeah. just just popped out and went. Yeah, yeah. yeah just just if it was a hundred foot, a hundred foot tall oak tree. So it wouldn't be a hundred. Yeah. It would have to be a hundred minus yeah. six, to make it ninety four. So that should be larger. Yeah, but look, because the angles are so close on. Yeah, I can't even roll like eight. Six over ninety four. As an alternative to matching the physical cards in the formative assessment lesson, students matched cards in a Desmos activity. You may already be aware of the free graphing calculator Desmos. In addition, Desmos has launched, within the last few years, Desmos classroom activities. This free web-based program has digital math activities created by the Desmos team and the math community. They are engaging and help develop a love of math with both immediate feedback for the teacher and the student. In addition, there is a free custom activity builder in Desmos where you may create your own activities. Using this custom activity builder, the sorting activity from right triangles in your environment was made digital. Students here are, can work together or individually to match the context to the right triangle diagram. In the Clyde's construction crew task, students work with a partner to match the given problem to the corresponding right triangle setup. After making matches, students finish labeling the problem and solve using trigonometric ratios. One of the problems given in this task requires application of the relationship between the sine and cosine of complementary angles. A ramp on one of the buildings rises 5 feet to the top of a wall. The cosine of the angle between the ground and the ramp is 866 thousandths. What is the sine of the angle the ramp forms with the wall? This might be a bad idea, but aren't they supposed to equal 90? Uh, they are, but hold on, I'm trying to think. Okay. I think God, I need to put the eraser for this, please. Okay, hold on. Did that, I think. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think. Um. All right, so let's ask. That told you that the cosine of this angle was that, right? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is the question asking you? For the sine of the same angle. The, read that again for me. Okay. The sine of the angle. A ramp. Of this angle, sine of it is the same thing. What it, what do you mean by that? So because the so let's say this is a, this is b, and it said that this angle, the cosine of it is zero point eight six six. So the sine of a equals the same thing. The culminating task, hypsometer activity, indirect measurement, can be found in the Georgia frameworks for geometry unit three and analytic geometry unit two. A hypsometer sometimes called a clinometer, is an instrument for measuring height or elevation. An inexpensive version to use with students may be created using a straw, string, and paper clip. To use a hypsometer, you first determine the horizontal distance from the object you want to find the height of. Then, tilting the hypsometer and looking through the straw, you find the top of the object you want to find the height of. Finally, you determine the angle where the string touches the protractor and calculate the angle of elevation. 
Then using trigonometric ratios, you can find your height of the object. These students use trigonometry and the hypsometer to estimate the height of the building. After you complete this video, discuss with your colleagues how this task and previous tasks encourage students to engage in mathematics and develop their mathematical practices. So if you're the person right here and this is 140, you're making a one, no, you're making a nine degree angle with you and the wall right there. So we need to subtract 90, or yeah, 90 from 140 to yes, get that to angle, get that right, angle so right there. Right, from my eyesight to the top of the building, which is our angle B, we uh, once we did that, we got our angle 356.33, and that was the angle from my eyes to the top of the building, so we had to add my height to it, which was 63 inches, which we ended up with 419.33. So you said that you found um, your angle, you used the tangent and you found your angle. Yes. Is that angle? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. These tasks and additional resources may be found at georgiastandards.org.